निकालना पड़ता है फिर दोनों कांटे को क्या करना पड़ता है दोनों कांटे को उसी प्रकार भगवान इस संसार में अनेकों लीला आदि करते हैं उस लीलाओं के द्वारा भगवान इन जगतों के सो मेनी पास्ट टाइम्स भगवान मेड इन दिस वर्ल्ड एंड थ्रू दिस पास्ट टाइम्स Some people worship Kali, Shiva, Durga. They do. They worship these demigods. Many people have this feeling that if they do puja of the demigods, the what in happiness and the suffering also, also suffers will be destroyed. But in Bhagavad Gita, it is said, what is the what is the cause of the suffering? Is it the demigods, or? It is it you because we suffer in this world, and what is the cause of that? Why people suffer in this material world? Because according to karma, according with your own karma, will you suffer or you will uh, attain happiness? For Example: If you do some charity, you will attain happiness. But if in any of your lives you cause suffering to someone, you will have suffering also, because for every action, there is a reaction. Because if we are suffering because of our own karma. Why do we have to um, mention the demigods in this in this issue? Why are you talking about demigods? But if you if we think about it, you see, I gave suffering. I caused suffering to someone in another life. So that's why in this life I am also suffering. So why am I bringing demigods in the middle of this? The demigods are going to give me the happiness or suffering? Do you understand what I'm saying? Did he say, Gurudeva, but we don't see God? We actually don't see God, so we can accept God in any form. Okay, you're saying that you didn't see God, but I have seen God, so I can tell you. So you are saying that what I am saying is that that's the question that comes in Bhagavatam. You do this puja, right? So if the if the soul is suffering according to his own karma. Why are you bringing a third person in, the, in this story? Why are you bringing the demigods in the middle of that? Bhagavan raises this question. Hmm. First, listen my harikatan. Because if we did the good karma in previous life, this good karma is coming for us in this life. But if in previous life I did some bad karma, the fruit of this bad karma also come f for me. So why bring someone else in this story? People think that if I worship the demigods, I'm going to, to attain a good karma. But actually, the karma that you get, your karma doesn't go away. First you have to understand, then you can analyze. Okay, you can do puja of demigods. You do that, okay. But the question, the question here is, in this material world, in this samsara, the jivas are suffering or enjoying according 
to their karma. So why are you bringing another person, a third person, this story? Because we think that is suffering. We think that the demigods can destroy this bad karma that we have, this suffering. Because if, it, if we think that conscious or unconscious, I did a bad thing, this karma for sure is going to come back for me in this life. So we are thinking that this bad karma that I did in previous life, I, I don't know about that. So if I worship demigods, they will destroy this this karma. That's why that's why we do puja. Why we do puja? For example, we have a, some kind of suffering. So when? So we go to astrologer because you want to know when the suffering is going to end. How long it is it going to last? And then the astrologer tells you about about the, all the no everything from astrology. So he tells you, oh, you on Saturday you have to go, I don't know, someplace and throw the, this mustard seed somewhere. You have no idea. Since 4 a.m. in the morning, people go all day. They all day they went. They go from Nandaga. It's a temple. This, this place in Braj is a temple that Sanidev and Kokilavan. There, there, the people make like a big line, so big line to enter in this temple. They stay all day like there. So we don't know. We don't know what we've done in previous life. Do you know? You don't know the karma that you've done. But we think if I do the puja of these or that, and demigod or demigodes, they, they will destroy my bad karma and I will attain happiness. But the question is that is the. We think that. So the second thing is that people do puja because they think they are going to Swarga Loka. Because we are suffering in this world, so we have to get this material body. But when you attain the celestial planets, you will not have suffering there. In Swarga Loka, in celestial heavenly planets. So in this material world, everybody has to suffer. Uparloka. Amit Bhojan, happiness there, here suffering. As far as everybody drinks this nectar, everybody is happy. So everybody wants to go there to attain this happiness. So Sukadeva Goswami tells this Arikata to Parikdit Maharaj. Once Sukadeva Goswami said, Hey Parikit Maharaj, listen very carefully, listen to this Kumbraj Kata. Bhagavan is staying in Braja for 10 years and 8 months, doing many different pastimes, beautiful pastimes, and everybody uh, is full of happiness and bliss with, his, with such beautiful pastimes of Bhagavan. Oh, Parikit Maharaj, listen very carefully to this Harikatha. One day, Krishna took the, his friends, cowherd boys, and they were herding the cows. And they went to a place near to Mathura. It was lunchtime. Around midday, one o'clock. And it was very hot, very hot season. And all, all cohort boys told Krishna, Krishna, let's eat. Let's eat something. Hmm. 
बीच में कोई पेड़ पौधे नहीं मिल रहे थोड़ा विश्राम कर ले so they were looking for a place to rest but it's they did they didn't find any tree any tree to, to rest under the the shade of the tree so it was so hot and uh, they could not even walk anymore because the the earth the soil was so hot so they thought okay let's let's just sit down under a tree we can eat under this this tree so every day the friends of krishna and cover boys they bring something to eat like midday they take prasad so they take this food so one or two p.m. they bring this, this you know, this food that they, the the parents prepared, like roti, special this this rice with yogurt, which is very famous in, in Braj. It is explained in Bhagavatam. They eat this. They take this chawal with dahi. Also pickles, pickle, lime, lime pickle and roti. So all Krishna's friend that day they forgot their what's the name? They, their tiffins, their tiffins with food. They forgot. All of them forgot. Because Jogamaya wants to arrange the lilas, so all of them forgot, and they said, oh, "What am I? Where, why are we going to do now?" We are so much hungry. It's very hot also. So what? What are we going to do? So, Bhagavan Krishna and Balaram, they were also there walking with them. And the friends told, actually, we are very near to Mathura. And they saw a smoke. They saw a smoke, so they thought someone is cooking there. So let's go in this place, and then we can eat. When they got near to the smoke, they saw that there were some brahmanas, some brahmanas from Mathura. They were there doing fire sacrifice to attain Swarga Loka. Like I told you before, some people want to attain this Swarga Loka. So they were doing this fire sacrifice. They were burning the woods and chanting mantras and and saying swaha swaha. So Krishna. So he said, "Okay, now they are doing this this fire sacrifice, and in the end of the fire sacrifice, they have these ingredients. These ingredients they offer to the fire, because in the shasta it is explained." that we have to offer these ingredients, these, these foodstuffs. So according to this Smarta Vichar, the conception of the, the Brahmanas, okay, this Bhojan means food. So Bhagavan said, you have to go there because for sure this Brahman has brought some foodstuffs to offer in the fire sacrifice. So Krishna told his friends, you have to go there and you pray for this Brahmanas, for them to give food for us. So all friends of Krishna, Subha, Sridham, Madhamangal, etc. All the cover boys came to the Brahmanas and they were there doing Swaha, Indraya Swaha, Varunaya Swaha. Taking the ingredients with their hands and throwing the fire. Speaking, saying Swaha, Swaha. 
They were Brahmanas from Karmakanda. So the friend said, look, I'm sure, I'm sure that you have some foodstuffs here. You brought some food here, you're going to offer. Because when someone is hungry, is hungry, you have to give food to that person, at least something, a little bit you have to give to the person, to a hungry person, because this is piety, mm, it's pious activity. If you have, if you give money to a person, the person can misuse your money. The person can go in and be buy alcohol or something like that. People ask money on the streets. Sometimes you give a hundred rupees or something like that, and the person take the money and go to the to drink alcohol. So you have to suffer this karma also, even though you didn't know, even if it's, you didn't know that the person was going to do this. Still, in the same way that conscious or unconscious, you put a hand in the fire and you you get burned. On the same way, this money that you give in donation, if this money is misused, you have to you have to suffer this. Therefore, Swayam Bhagavan told. told his friends to ask uh, for uh, food. No need to ask money, they just asked food. So the Brahmana said, now the friends told, we are hungry. And the Brahmanas did not even answer. They were so much absorbed in the fire sacrifice to attain Swarga Loka and throwing the ingredients in the fire So many times the Sakas were asking, oh, we are hungry, give some food for uh, to us. But the Brahmas didn't, didn't give attention to them. Maybe one or two Brahmas did. The eldest ones, they were insulting the boys. Hey, where have you come from, your cover boys? How, how did you come here? We are doing puja. Despite sacrifice. <coughs> so uh, only when the puja is finished will you give something because as long as the puja is not finished, you will not get any bhaja because this is the rules of the Shastra. And they were they just they were just insulting, chastising the, the sakas. And they were very sad. And they came back to Bhagavan and they told him, Look, that Brahmanas were so much absorbed in the fire sacrifice, doing swaha, swaha. And they even insulted us. And they didn't give anything for us to eat. Krishna. For every disease, there is a medicine. But for you can tolerate, but uh, it's very difficult to tolerate the um, the hunger. hunger. For example, if you have some disease or anything, you go to the doctor. And usually, doctors in the Western. They don't give right away the medicine for you. Here in India, they give the medicine for you right away, immediately. But in the Western, no. First, they, they want to do many tests, exams. And after that, they give you the medicine or not. But here, you go to the hospital at the same mo moment. Doctor give you medicine, then go, uh, uh, tells you, like, go back to your home. Go away. Hmm. 
So here, what happened in the story I was telling you? The, pe the person that is hungry needs to eat right away, immediately. There is no, there is no medicine for, for hunger. Only food. Only f food can cure when someone is hungry. So Sakas, they told Krishna, Govinda Krishna, please tell us. Tell us. We are so disturbed by because we are hungry. We, hungry. We want to eat. And Krishna told, "Listen, my friends. The, the hearts of men are very hard. These brahmanas are karma kundis. Karma kundis. They have the hard, hard, you know, hard ish. <laughs> so." How many women are today here? How many ladies are here today listening to Harikatan? Because um, before he said, Krishna was saying, go to the, the Brahmana's wives, hmm? because they, they have softer heart. So some, some husbands, they are against. They don't know, they don't, you have to, they don't like to go to listen to Harikatan. They go here and there, but they don't come to Harikata, these husbands, to listen to Harikata. So Krishna was saying, you have to go to that Brahmana's wives because their heart, the heart of women are softer. And it's possible that they give food for you. And then Saka said, but if the husbands didn't give food for us, how possible we are going there to the, the wives? So Bhagavan gave a uh, teaching. He said, when you do this donation, big, big sh no, big sh uh, if a person doesn't give you donation, no problem, you go to another person. You don't have to think, like, if the first person, if a person didn't give you donation, next one will also not give you. Maybe the first one, the second, third one, don't give you donation, but the fourth person, the fourth one can give you something. Because someone that is always asking, asking for donation, like a homeless person, it's not, he always will have something, because he's always asking, asking, so uh, he will get something one day. So you have to be. So you have to go to these Brahmanas' wives and ask them. So all the Brahmanas' wives that were doing the fire sacrifice, they brought they brought many sweets, many kinds of foods to do that. Uh, fire sacrifice, the end of fire sacrifice, and they were prepared. They were prepared to leave their homes. They were at their homes, at the door, and they would like because that time there were no locker. They could not lock the door, but they were closing the door, so no animal or dog will enter their houses. So they were just leaving their houses. <coughs> And then this, this exact time, the Sakas were there, went there, and they said, Krishna Balaram, they are nearby, they are nearby here. Krishna Balaram to, uh, sent us here so we could get some food. But these wives, Brahmas, when they heard the name of Krishna, their heart melted. <coughs> because all these Brahmanis, they already heard Krishna's qualities, but they've never seen Krishna. Krishna's form is so beautiful and also his qualities. So when they heard the name of Krishna, these women, these Brahmanis, they were bringing these plates of food, this, this food that were going to be offered to the fire sacrifice. The same food they took, they took to Krishna Balaram so they could have uh, the darshan of them. 
So my dear, Mad Bhagavatam, Sayam Bhagavan. So Kadhi Bhagavan explain all this Hari Katha to Parikit Maharaj. In the same way as the um, as a, a river flows very strong to the ocean. In the same way, these Brahmanis, they were so much eager to have the darshan. So with this eagerness, they took those this food. This food were, ma were made to the fire sacrifice, but they took it, took this food for Krishna. And when they saw Govinda, all these Brahmanis started to cry. All this form of Krishna. Oh, Maharaj Parikit, Sukadeva Sukhaswami says, on that moment, the wonderful form of Krishna that Brahmanis saw, it was so beautiful, incredible form. How was that, that form? The form of Krishna is so beautiful. He has the pitambara, the yellow upper cloth. So beautiful, his pitambara. And he also, uh, he was wearing this garland made by the gopis. And on his head, a peacock feather. Have you seen Krishna? So beautiful, his peacock feather. Here in this picture, he is wearing a, a king cloth. But in, because in the temple, we put this Rajavish, this king cloth in, in Govinda. We decorate the, him or them with many ornaments and cloths because we do for, uh, for Krishna in the same way that we do to ourselves. Shastra says you have to serve Krishna the same way that you serve yourself. Like if you put nice cloths, you also put nice cloths on the date. If you eat, if you also eat nicely, you, you, know, this object, you also give this nice food to Krishna. Krishna. Whatever you eat, you're also going to, to feed Krishna. <coughs> so, if every day you're giving the same thing, I don't, and the lady says, I don't want to eat this, the same thing, same thing every day, but no, you have to eat this, because I am taking this food. So Krishna, you have to eat this also. And Bhagavan is very merciful. He's very merciful, so he manifests in this form of Vigraha. Vigraha means, I don't know if you know about that, but Vigraha means Vishesha Rupena, which means in a special way, Bhagavan accepts your service. Oh, whatever you give him, he will eat. If you are a Premi Bhakti, if you have pure love, Bhagavan will tell you, oh, Bhagavan, I cannot take that. The same day, Roti, at least, uh, sometimes give me something different to eat. Lapsi, what is that? <coughs> Some kind of food, like the deity is saying, I want lapsi, I don't want roti. So you take sem semolina, what is the English word? You do this... Um, um, farinha. What, wheat? No, sorry. You, do, you, you can cook and make this laps. You, you don't even need teeth to, to bite this food. Old people? That's why Nanda Maharaj gave this laps for them to eat. In this, in this festival, Nanda Maharaj gave donations to 
for the world people. Other people, he gave it his lab, see, because they don't have, after 90 years, they don't have teeth, they cannot eat ladu, because ladus of the ladus of Braj are very hard. So, you put uh, flour, flour, and water, and sugar, semolin, semolin of flour, sugar and water, and then you make this food. So what is the Vikraha? According to, to the devotee, Bhagavan will manifest. But if you are a Premi Bhakt, if you have real love for him, Krishna will say, every day you give me roti, Give me some sweet jalebi, lapsi sometimes, or ladu. But if you're not Premi Bhakt, so okay, whatever you give him, he will accept. So, so we decorate God in the form that we like to see him, that we like enjoy to see him. For example, in Ramana Bihari Gurdiyamad, they decorate such a nice and beautiful way. It, this gives, gives us so, so much bliss because these ornaments also they are so expensive. And Bhagavan says, they put me that cloth, that jodi. So you think that I don't feel uh, I'm I'm, don't f I'm not hot with these clothes? With these clothes? some kind of cloth, cloth very hot. So he's saying, oh, give me some <coughs> another kind of cloth. So they go and put air conditioner, conditioner to the deity. <coughs> so continue, Harikata. That, um, so that um, Krishna was with a very beautiful form when the Brahmanis were, were seeing him. And in one hand, Krishna was holding a lotus flower. And actually, this lotus is like our heart. <laughs> so they were. Krishna was like twisting the lo lotus in his hand and th th all the Brahmanis were like mm, don't, uh, like this and also he, he was wearing this karnika, this kind of flower in his, in his ear <coughs> and the cheeks, Krishna's cheeks were so effulgent and beautiful and also the gopi dots that the gopis made in him were also so beautiful and with the rays of the sun they were shining so much so krishna was, talk was talking with his friends and he was smiling and this is the form that the brahman is these Brahmana's wives describe the form of Krishna. One or, one were talking, one were describing, they were describing to each other, talking to each other about the form of Krishna. So they gave all that food to Krishna and Balaram. And then Krishna shared with all his friends that food. Hmm? Every day, every day we we, we, have, we take we eat in our house. But it, when you go outside another place, we are very happy. When you offer to Takuji, like. Every day you offer Takuji in your house, but when you go to the temple, you say, oh, today the prasad is so nice. But why you say that? You don't like the prasad in your house? 
what happens is that when you you cook himself, you know what you cooked and you know. But when you when you eat something that another person cooked, then you feel so much ananda, so much bliss. So sometimes I tell this story; it's like a joke. Uh, one time, once a, a friend, a friend told the other friend, "My wife is not happy with me. Whatever I do, or whatever I say, my wife is never happy with me. Never, never happy. Never satisfied." So. The other friend said, okay, do this. If you want to satisfy your wife, so you have to do this. You have to um, give, uh, give. You have to like give, uh, say flattering words, compliment, say flattering words. Because when you say something good to a person, the person likes very much. But if you say something bad, you see that the face of the person, which is like a flower, just closes when you say something bad. So when the, your wife is, when your wife gives food for you, you have to say, oh, oh this dao is so nice. The, you, you cook so nice today. And then the man said, but my wife, my wife, she doesn't cook very nice. She puts so much, so much salt. It doesn't matter. You have to say that you like. Today, when you sit uh, to eat, uh, you have to um, like com compliment. So it was lunchtime. And uh, the wife cooked uh, gobi, par parata, parata gobi. Oh, gobi is what? Oh, gobi is like cauliflower parata. So it was very nice. She put, um, she put ghee and also sabji, very warm and very nice. So she served the husband. Yeah, so the, the friend had told him, you, whatever she give you, you have to glorify her. So he started to eat, and the subject was, it was very nice indeed. It was very good subject. And, and this cauliflower part, uh, everything was very uh, warm, and he felt so much uh, ananda, and also uh, butter, also very hot butter, nice. And he said, this parata is so good. Today, Lakshmi Devi manifested in your hands when you were cooking this parata. So he was speaking three times more than his friends you know, had advised him. Like he was glorified so much. And the Shastra said that when you glorify a person, like. Uh, so much, you glorify so much, it's like you are criticizing this person. So if you say, oh, this food is good, so okay, but if you're glorifying, speaking so much, so much, that person will understand that there is something wrong there. <coughs> yeah, so he was glorifying so much, three times more. And the wife said, three um, for, for three. <laughs> it's been three years that you don't glorify my food. You don't say that my food is good. But today, I just took this food from the neighbor, the lady <laughs> neighbor. She cooked this, actually. I did not cook today. So you are glorifying her. <laughs> so all the suckers were satisfied. And Brahmani said, Krishna, you are our life and soul. And they were saying, Shastra, we saw that 
Uh, we have to do Bhagavad Bhajan. And you are so merciful. We don't want to go away. We want to stay here with you. Because our husbands, they only do karma kanda. They don't do bhajana. They only do in that swaha, swaha. They don't do anything else. If we say something to them, they are angry with us. They say, you are women. You don't know anything. They have this ego of pandit. They have this they, that they know everything. Husbands are like that. They are arrogant and proud. Women don't know anything. You don't have intelligence. They cur not curse. They say bad words for us to us. So husbands treat women like that. So the Brahmani said, "We don't want to go because after many lifetimes, now finally we have your darshan, the darshan of your lotus feet." If we are not here with you, where are, you, are we going? Because what is the the goal of life? Is to do Bhagavad Bhajan. Like I said before, we do karma in this world. So we have to suffer or not, depending on the karma. And after that, also we like we put the demigods in the middle of the story, thinking that they are going to to help us to, to finish with our karma. We put this with uh, Nishinhaka, Nishinhaka Vaj, like Nishinhadeva will protect us, but whatever we do, some people also, they, the people say many things, so many things, different things that you are even crazy about what they're saying, like you have to put something in your body, otherwise you will not be protected or anything like that. Uh. So, in the end, you're just going to do what people tell you to do. For example, you say, Maharaj, my business is not going well. I am always losing my money, whatever I put my money on. So, okay, do something. Worship Sunny. This honey will improve your planet. And then another person comes and says, Oh, you have to worship Devi, Devi Maya and do this Navaratra. So you also do this, and also the situation in your life gets better. So if you, you do so many things, so many different things, that you are like lost in the middle of them. Because what? You can, uh, what, what is going to happen we will happen. You can do anything to change it, but it's not going to cha change. People and people, they get even tired of doing so many things. First, because okay, like yesterday in Matura, I told you that I spent Sorry, no translation. In the same way, uh, jivas are wandering in this path of karma, they are suffering. What to do? In the same way, these Brahmanis, they were saying, they were asking, uh, what can we do with our husbands? Now, Govinda, we had the darshan, the darshan of your, your feet. We don't want to go back home anymore. So, Bhagavan says, and then, Mm 
Bhagavan says, Oh Arjun, because people don't have faith. Because when you serve God, you, you, you do everything. If I tell you, don't do this puja, don't do this. So these people, they get angry. So just let people do what they want to do. You have to, you have to engage people in doing seva and obtain sukriti. Not take, take them out like of what they are already doing, because when the sukriti is um, like ripen, then you start to have faith in Harikata. But if the person, person doesn't have faith, just let this person do, continue doing what what uh, he's doing, and after. But after some time, when this person is tired of what what he's doing, he's, he'll be the person will be uh, automatically start to a huge, huge change. Like after so many time doing karma, then the person gets tired. Of, because the person sees that there's nothing to obtain by uh, from that. So, you have to do karma, but you have to abandon the desire to obtain the fruit of that karma. The Brahmanas were saying, we don't want to go. Because we had the darshan of your lotus feet, lotus feet. So, trouble be merciful with us. And then Bhagavan told those women, "Look, oh Brahmanis." Go back to your houses. Everything is going to be good, all right. Bhagavan was thinking, only by taking, uh, by taking, uh, by taking my darshan, all of their desires are already satisfied, already fulfilled. Bhagavan says this, when you have the darshan, when you have Bhagavan's darshan, you will have no, uh, you'll not have any other desire, material desire. So Bhagavan was saying, go back to your houses and continue with your karma, with your activities. But if you stay with me, you will not obtain the f attain the fruits actually. But if you are f away, far from me, and you listen to Harikata, if you if you stay in your houses, but you listen to my Harikata and meditate on me, and you meditate in my form and do my kirtan, then you will attain the benefit. In the same way, when we are far from something, we think more about the thing. When something is near, when you are near to something, for example, if you get some precious jewel, for so long you have this precious do with you and after some time this this jewel just disappeared you cannot find it anymore someone stole it or something you lost it somewhere and then what happens you start to think about that precious jewel so much 
sleeping uh, when you wake up, mm, sit, sitting, you will always remember that thing that you lost. But then saying, look, I am for, look, for you. I am that precious, that precious thing, because in this material world, the most precious and valuable thing is Bhagavan. We have no realization. We don't know about that. We are ignorant. This is another thing. But the real truth is that there is nothing else in this world, only Bhagavan. So Bhagavan says, do my kirtan. Because in this Kali Yuga, the kirtan is most Prominent. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Remember in chanting the holy names, the human being crosses this material. Uh, ocean. Uh, some people say that they don't have time to chant. Everybody has time. When you go to take a bath or shower, you have a time to chant. Like you have time to chant while you are taking shower, you can chant. So Nam Sankirtan. Because maybe sometimes when you are so near to a person, maybe you see it, uh, this person flaws, defects flaws, because we start to see the faults of that person. Because you are so near to the person. For example, a chief is always a chief is what we'll always think that everybody here is also a chief. Are we chiefs? But the chiefs they have this mentality. They they are they they're thinking. No. The chief is thinking that everybody everybody is also a chief. Everybody's robbing. That anybody in this world is honest, everybody's a chief. That is the logic. So he goes to the uh, owner of the shop and they take a scale. For example, you're going to buy a sabji in the market. When you go to a shop, they have this scale. Uh, they have in the street, they have that scale. If you buy one kg of potatoes or anything, and in the end, when you you buy, then in the end you say, oh, please give me some some, some extra, like give me some coriander or pepper, chili. But you, because if you ask, he will give you for sure. But if you don't ask, maybe he gives or not. Sometimes gives or not. And you're thinking this person is so nice because every, oh, this person is always giving me something like extra you know? Pe chili or lemons or coriander. Where this person is taking this from? Like, is it for free? Really? Where, where is it coming from? You think, oh, he is so nice, such a nice person. Every day, this is the this samsara is like that. Actually, nothing is for free. We cannot get anything for free in this world. Like in the Western, there's something I think I think this is very funny because they say, buy one, get one, free one. Then I say, no, first I want my free free one, then I, I buy one. Because actually this money, this f money of the free one is already included in the, you know. So Bhagavan, 
say something very nice. You cannot get the fruit when you are so near to me. You will get the fruit when you are far. Because when you are ne near to someone, you, you will see that person's flaws or faults. If you are so much near, huh? you like, but, but like when you are meeting so much, there's no, it's not so much Ananda anymore. Mm -hmm. Like Mahatma is coming every day. You say, oh, just you coming every day, asking for donation in my home, my house. Just come like uh, sometimes. So this Mataji, she asked, oh, Shanta Mahatma, please come to my house. And he said, okay, one day, two, three days. And she was giving food, feeding him. And on the third day, she said, why do you have to come here every day? First day, you gave me butter and roti. Second day also. Third day, you gave me the, like just a dry, dry roti. Fourth day, fourth day you asked, why are you coming here? So you understand. <laughs> so you say, you say, Maharaj, you can come every day, but in the practical, practical way, it's different. Because if you are near me, th that's the fruit that you get when you are near me, you get an even bigger fruit when you are far from me. Because when you are far, your mind is absorbing that thing, like I told you. When you are near something, oh no, when you get something valuable, valuable, and then the thing is destroyed or lost, you are always thinking about that thing. Like if you have two sons, two one of them, two sons, one of them is very near to you. And the other one is like in a foreign country. So you are always thinking about that son. Oh, is he eating? Uh, you know, thinking about him. So, it's like that. That's why Bhagavan says, he told the Brahmanis, go back and meditate on me. So the Brahmanis said, look, this, Oh, the ingredients, these ingredients of the fire sacrifice, we gave these ingredients to you. But our husbands are going to be very angry with us. So what to do? We don't want to go back home. And Bhagavan said, oh, Brahmanis, look, listen. You had my darshan. And as a fruit of these, your husband's hearts are are going to change. They are going to be pure, pure hearts they will have. Because it is said in Shastra that if the wife does bhajan, this will affect the husband somehow. It will affect the husband a little bit. Like if you follow Ekadasi, who follows Ekadasi here? Who doesn't do? You don't do Ekadasi, you should do it. So if you do Ekadasi, I'm just telling two words about it. On uh, the day of Ekadashi, all kinds of uh, this, uh, the scene, scenes, pap, five types, five types of grains, rice, I don't know the word, sorry. Five types of grains. <coughs> so all this, the pap, all the scenes of killing a Brahmana, mother, cow, this is explained. All these scenes are inside the grains. So you, ha you must not eat grains on the day and also you must not give in, the, in donation or give to someone on the day of Ekadas, you should not give grains on the day. People think, some people think that it's only rice you should not eat on Ekadas today, but it's actually these five types of grains that you must not eat and also not give to another person. You can take fruits, you can give 
another thing. But if you don't do anything, it's even even better. Let it. Um, let the person just like be hungry. <laughs> I'm not saying that you, sh you should not give donation. Okay, you can give fruits. You can give fruits donation. But in the day of Ekadashi, How many ants were killed, were killed in, in, when you were on the path from here? You cannot, uh, you have no right to kill, to kill anyone. You have no disqualification of giving life and also to kill. But when you are walking, no, you, you kill many entities, living entities. So how, you ask, how am I going to walk with my feet on my head? So you have to do these vows, this purification, in order to finish with these, with these pops. When you do it, Kadasi, your sins are destroyed. Any Hare And to destroy all sins, you have to change the holy names. So Krishna gave this instruction to the Brahmanis. Go back to your houses. By listening to this Harikata, all the Brahmanis, after, after they served Bhagavan, they went back to their homes. But look how God's Jogamaya is. Mm. Because after bhakti manifests, if you really have Shuddha bhakti, you have this attachment, deep attachment for Krishna. Like a, lo a lotus, when it blooms and emanates a fragrance that attracts the bumblebees, same thing, the heart of that person. Everybody will be attracted by that person who has bhakti. So Bhagavan told them, the Brahmanis, go back to your houses. Then your husbands will honor you, will respect you. So they went back to their houses. They, they followed what God told them, and they went back to their houses. And when, when they did it, Sukadev so Goswami says, Hey Parikita Maharaj, listen. So after listening what Bhagavan told them, the Brahmins went back home and their husband started to uh, <laughs> do, pranams, do pranams to them. Their hearts changed. God changed their hearts. And then the husbands They repented in themselves for what they've done before. And they said, You are very lucky. Because you had the darshan, direct darshan of Bhagavan. And now you are back here. You came back here. After having the darshan of Bhagavan, you came here. 
Oh. It is material world. You are, we are deluded by Maya. We are doing this karma here. But uh, what is the fruit of this karma? It's very small. Very little. I know. Uh, Gurudeva gave an example. When a person is, uh, is like he's digging, digging a mountain, and after so much digging, the person found a red, a small red. So what is the meaning? You do such a difficult karma, so struggle so much for the karma, and after that you get such such a small fruit, little fruit. So Bhagavan, when you do bhajan of Bhagavan, all your karma is destroyed. All fruits of the karma are destroyed. Therefore, that Brahmanas, they repented themselves. Oh, Ailas, Ailas. Um, our lives, we are doing this fire sacrifice to attain Swarga Loka, but it's actually Vishnu himself to that uh, the fruit of doing this fire sacrifice is to get affection for Krishna. So the Brahmanas they gave so much respect to their wives. And with so much love and affection, they took the the wives back to their houses. You are so lucky, fortunate. We are w men, we are Brahmanas, and our heart is so hard. But our heart should be like soft. Yeah. Because if your heart is hard, how can I say? You can be, if, whether you are women or men, your heart should be like that, soft. Tender. Bhagavatam also insults. I'm not saying the. What is that? But, uh, anyway, our heart should be soft. So how? How? What is the method? Chanting the holy names very early in the morning. Hare So very early in the morning, you have to wake up and shine the holy names. Bef before you're going to, to sleep, also. So by chanting the holy names, our heart will be cleaned, cleansed, pure. <laughs> so and what I'm trying to say is that you have to do Bhagavan Bhajan. All the demigods, the demigods, the goddess do Bhagavad Bhajan. So everybody has to do